I don't know why you get so hung up on not being able to see. Because I want to see you, man. I don't want to. You know what? Turn your camera off, dude. I don't want to see you. <laughs> nah, I'm leaving it. <laughs> I don't want to see it, dude. I want you to look at me, dude, and just have all your deepest, darkest fantasies come through. I put my point. I put a window over it so I can't even see it. I can just hear it. <laughs> I will say though that you're missing out on quite the unibrow, dude. I got a great unibrow bro. I mean I usually do, but this one is nice. Um what's the purpose? Just cause? Just natural? I just grow a little. My unibrow grows really fast. Mm. Like wax it. I've done all kinds of shit. It just grows back. Hey, honestly, it takes a mind of its own, man. So I've never noticed. You have a unibrow? I've never noticed that about you. I have a quite the you know, I mean like I mean, it's not like it's a full, crazy, you know, one of, like one of those Safety brothers fucking unibrow or something like that, mm-hmm. but it's a fucking, you know, yeah, it's not a full, it's not a full caterpillar, but. Well, that's what I was going to say. It feels like I'm petting a little bit of a caterpillar uh. on, my, on my nose, bridge part of my nose. Damn it. Well, so you keeping it? Or what's the, what's the vibe these days? No, I'll probably just keep it. It's fine. Why not, dude? Let it ride? Who, who, who am I trying to impress? <laughs> uh me obviously you want me to i say i'm trying uh, to get you as hard as possible for these yeah man everything. yeah you know you're trying to make me uh feel crazy you know i need to do a beard trim i need to cut my unibrow i'll get some acne in get, i've been drinking a lot a cocktail <laughs> a lot of sweet cocktails a lot of nice acne coming in <laughs> Bingo. My name is Stretch. This is the last time you mess with Stretch. Ah! Ah! And fade. You know, uh, kids, let that be a lesson to you. You know, when you're drinking alcohol, people talk all this shit about your liver. That's not the worst part. No, it's the it's the post puberty acne. That's the worst part. If you die from alcoholism, you can't hear people talk bad about you. Exactly. So it's all about your outward appearances. No one can see your liver. Yeah, you know, it can be as it can be as ugly as you want it to be. Same thing with smoking. No one can see your lungs. All right. Yeah, but at least with smoking, is you smell bad and your teeth usually suck. Yeah, but don't you when you drink a ton, aren't you just like? burping up acid and you know your eyes are looking more no, and more sunken in not not this cat dude oh, okay sorry sorry I, I because of my alcoholism i look bright I'll, mm. i look uh what is it, like voibrous is that a word if it's not yeah. words, it, it is now yeah voibrous is. jack daniels needs to pivot and just cut the shit all right J- jack daniels needs to pivot and start doing commercials like <clears throat> they do skin commercials you know Imagine if they showed a 46-year-old man against a white psych, and it's like, the all-new number 10 Jack Daniels brew, guaranteed to brighten your skin, make you more social, and overall just more attractive to your peers. And then... Yeah, it, it, the, comp- the, the companies lie like to an extreme to where I kind of miss that. <laughs> yeah. I wish people would just bet you could fly. Yeah. Drink enough Coke Zero... The aspartame in it will, you could possibly fly. Yeah. And I, I like that that at least gives you a goal. Yeah. And maybe one day I could fly, and I like that. Yeah. Well, your power's been out, and it's back on. That's how was that experience, was. dude? How, how, what was it like having no power? How, what was it like living in 1805 <laughs> for fucking 36 hours? No, I wasn't that my power was out. It's just that these fucking imbeciles who bury fiber, which I'm almost convinced that every person that buries fiber for a living is a fucking moron sure like a like a convict and a moron right maybe both probably both right i sit there i'm like hey but for real my power line runs through here so watch out oh definitely man definitely next thing you know he fucking nicks the power line so Uh, so the full power is out but nothing can get full power it's like like the lights are on but they hum computers can't be fully turned on yes. and i told him i walked down i said hey you nicked the power line oh yeah yeah we do that sometimes just call spectrum and i wanted to uh maybe that's what it was dude maybe i was i was trying to call connor like a fucking superhero like a like some kind of like tiki 
fucking shaman statue or something I could pray to and Connor right. would come out of the earth because I don't know if he's alive anymore or anything, but right. he'd come out and, go, and like grab him by the ankles and fucking drag him into the tall grass. I would have loved that. But no, you know, I have to go through Spectrum and do all this stuff. This fucking electrician I was talking to, I was like, man, it's a real kind of emergency. I'll pay you to come out early. All right, well, I'll see if I can't be on there Monday. I said, well, what does it mean by I'll see if I can? Is that, yeah. is that a yes? Well, I'll see if I can do it. Yeah. So this is the life I'm living. That's it's a good phrase. I'm, I'll see if I can. That's um. I'm gonna decide if I feel like doing it. Why well, is Monday perfect, it doesn't at keep you accountable, 8, fifteen? Dude. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't keep you accountable at all. And I, that's also what I like. Keep you accountable. Accountable. Keep you accountable. Accountable. What keeps you accountable, man? Do you think you could eat someone? Are you gonna eat somebody? Yeah. Like what? In what context could you eat a person? Any context, dude. Well, what's the what's the situation? No, Actually, dude, don't say don't say context. any. You wouldn't just walk out of this recording and go eat a person. How tasty is the person? Uh, okay, all right, fair, fair. Like if it's you, no. What the fuck am I going to eat? What the fuck did I do? What is this? You didn't do it. That's the problem. Is you didn't do anything. I'm like, if it's a big fatty, that's gonna be sweet, dude. You just think too. Even if you no, I don't think it, so. Like I think super, I think if you no stop. I think if you brined me no. If you brined me for 12 hours, I think you'd chow down, bro. I think you think that you're like really good like fried chicken skin. No, I don't like actually the best, think that The at best all. part of it. I think you do. No. I think you're like, I'm I the think... best part of this. People don't want to care about the meat underneath. They no. just care about the surface. No, no, no. Tell me, tell me this isn't true. Tell me my ass cheeks, deep fried, wouldn't be a nice, tasty little appetizer. Just two little wontons. Dude, I was watching you walk. I, honestly, I was watching you walk at the... Uh, at the F1 race. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I was like, Noel unironically walks and looks like from a distance, looks like Dakota Fanning from War of the Worlds. I was like, you look just like Dakota Fanning from War of the Worlds. I don't complexion and everything. Let me look up Dakota Fanning. Complexion and let, everything. Let, yeah, let, let me look up Dakota Fanning. Okay. I, dude, 47 I don't know. seven years old. I, she, she was a huge actor when we were like she is our age <clears throat> i don't know M like i'm very bad with names type in dakota and you know, don't yeah, look yeah. up normal type dakota fan to fanning man on fire okay there you go first off great movie probably my favorite De uh, denzel movie did yeah i've heard insanely you think i look like this <laughs> so okay right there go, go down go down and slide to the left where it's Denzel and her holding hand. That was basically Noel and Alina on the right <laughs> side there. <laughs> Walking through, he's like, hold on, I'm going to get a quesadilla. He walks off, and that's what they look like down there walking around. But I look like Dakota Fanning. Yeah, well, just the legs, I just guess. The legs, yeah. Yeah, that's a crazy thought. I didn't realize I looked that good from the back. You know, that's what we're talking about. Child Dakota Fanning. That's so what you said, man. You, like, you looked fucking hot from the back. You look just like Dakota Fanning from me. Uh, I don't think don't don't think that that's what I said. I you said I, you, you look... resemble you resemble a seven year old white child from the back. <laughs> is what I said. Walking far away, I was like, dude, you're I, dodging the question. Oh, Noel. You're dodging the question. Would I eat you? I you would, would eat you, dude. You would eat me? No. I'd eat you out of spite. No, dude. No. No. I want you to tell the truth. You'd enjoy. Those two wontons made from my ass cheeks. I think the best part about you, dude, is that you would fit in an air fryer. That's what I'm saying. Like, it'd be easy. It'd be the easy cleanup. That's what I'm saying. I'm a fucking, I'm a, re I'm a TV dinner as a, like for a cannibal person. I'm a TV dinner. Easy. Pull me did out the ever, freezer. Did you, like, did you ever like TV dinners? Did you ever eat a hungry man when you were younger? <sighs> Not a hungry man, but I ate like, I can't remember the brands, but they never felt like the main brands. They always felt kind of off. <laughs> like, you can definitely, you could have taste the plastic in it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, one, time like, I was at a, <laughs> one time I was at Walmart when I was younger, like probably like 17 or 18, right? When I, like right before I was starting to lose weight, mm. I'd go there and I'd buy Lean Cuisine pizzas. Mm. And it was right, what's the fucked up thing about that at Walmart is the Lean Cuisine health food microwave pizzas are right by like all of the ice cream and shit. Uh, yeah, that's a, and I was, that's and a I nice was, little trick they like to play. Yeah, but like, how convicted really are you? <laughs> how prepared really are you for this challenge? I sat there and I started to grab my, you know, like four or five of them just for the week. And this big, <laughs> oh, this, was big this big old, this big old fat lady came up and she's like, I don't think that's going to work. 
And she grabs like three of those Ben and Jerry's, like Ben and Jerry's, like cookie dough ice cream thing. Right. And I'm not even going to lie. I like, I, I saw that as a sign from God and I just, I put it back and I got some, <laughs> I got some ice cream instead. <laughs> I got to interrupt this episode to thank a sponsor of today's episode. I said episode twice. You like that? Regardless, we're going to give a big thank you to Uncommon Goods. If you want to hear where'd you get that this holiday season, Uncommon Goods is your secret weapon. Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for your secret Santa or your entire family, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they want. (laughs) They being uh, your entire family or your secret Santa. The gifts you can find on Uncommon Goods are very original and unique. I personally wanted to get a few gifts for Ovi, our producer, because she does such a wonderful job here at Stretch and Fade, and I was amazed at the options. I got her these adorable snack dishes shaped like cats, which she loves, because that's something I know, as she is one of my favorite producers here. And I also got her a DIY experience in making dumplings. Yum! When you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. These fine products are often made in small batches, so shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S. They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere, from art and jewelry to kitchen, home, and bar, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone. They're not the same lackluster gifts you can find just anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give back $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $2.5 million to date. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash stretch. That's uncommongoods.com slash stretch for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. I was like, there's no fucking way. I was like, if it, it's like to, to, to even have somebody come say that, I was like, God is speaking vicariously through this woman. Yeah. Is how I, is how I saw it. That ain't going to work. And you're like, you're damn right. It's not it gonna ain't going to work. And then looking back at it, I'm like, I only, I'm almost positive she has done the Lee Cuisine thing. She's like, why well, I mean, it's still so big? <laughs> you know? Why am I so big? It's, um, uh, you didn't even let me finish this in our last episode. You didn't let me finish Sorry. my fucking Bill Clinton rant about Andes. Oh, what was it? I was just going to say, every time I'm in the Midwest, I just love to go get ice cream and see it served by the good American people. That's all I want to say. It's my politician line. No, it's um, it's pretty awesome how you can just kill yourself with food in this country. M- dude, the Midwest, they are... It's fucked up, you know, just the Andes next to the Wendy's next to the other thing. It's just a triple whammy, you know, the gas station with all the bullshit in it. You can load the. I mean, you know, they're all fucking lab rats, all stupid, fat, fucking ugly people (laughs) in the middle of the country that aren't worth a shit. Yeah, I mean, whatever, dude, it's just fodder. It's the reason that the economy in this country keeps circulating is people in the Midwest are just dumb enough to buy fucking anything and consume it and be dumb and talentless. (laughs) <laughs> ugly and whatever else you know i fit right in here too i'm like i'm not trying to even i'm not even trying to be half near judgmental i'm just saying that that's just like the way it is you know and then there's a reason why like la why everyone's like kind of attractive and then it's like hipster italian joints and stuff which i mean i you know i don't vibe with i'd rather have the way these I'm just saying. No, I think people in LA are just skinny because it's too expensive to eat crazy otherwise they'd be all over it you know between the cocaine and the hundred dollar pastas, there's just no money left to be, true. you know, to to be degenerate, visibly degenerate, you know. But they are. We're all just a big. We're a big fucking sick pile, aren't we? No, I don't think so. I think it's just the middle of the country. Oh, just okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I think literally it's just the literal chili bowl that is known as the Midwest. <laughs> that is just full of just twos and threes. Trying their best. And that's all you can do, dude. You know, like, that's just, like, that is it. Yeah. And I have a deeper respect. And I think because of that, too, the Midwest, it it, 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 it operates in a different way. It's a lot mm. slower. It's a lot more methodical. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a nice dance. Yeah. You know? People, the dreams have died immediately. 
<laughs> you know, it's just like I am happy with this job that I know no other person on earth will be happy with. And I'm okay with that because me, my ugly wife, and my ugly kids all live under an ugly house in the middle of the country. And this is that's just what it is. Midwest. And honestly, in that respect too, it's actually heaven because of it. It's actually heaven. The Midwest. Come live here with your ugly ass family. <laughs> the Midwest, where rea- where reality strikes true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's my favorite thing ever. <laughs> yeah, like obviously I'm gonna start to work on the new hour and I like put up my new dates. Mm-hmm. And my favorite thing is when people message me and go, Why the fuck would you come back? <laughs> They're too young. They're too young to realize that they're just not going to do anything. With their life. <laughs> the sooner you grasp that shit, the sooner that you you find you find that prosperity, dude. <laughs> Which is what? Just nothing happens in the Midwest. That like you, especially like younger kids, they bitch and complain about the Midwest, and they might try and go to do things, but they'll fail because they're from the Midwest. <laughs> they're talentless. <laughs> So the sooner that you can realize that, like, dude, that's I not could... true. Kansas City has a bunch of fucking winners, man. Who? Ain't Paul Rudd from KC? Does he live here now? Don't think he does. <laughs> I'm sorry, not saying I'm just, that a couple. Sorry, I'm just I'm laughing at. I'm laughing at Scientology just being based. It's just a religion for <laughs> like elitist people in the Midwest to be like, no, I'm an alien. I need to escape this and go to LA to my headquarters where I belong with all the people doing cocaine and the odd people. I'm not like these uh, ugly families out here. I love Paul Ryan, dude. Yeah. Dude, I thought Kansas City has at least three impressive people. (laughs) Yeah. Come on, man. Kansas City has at least five impressive people. Kansas City is full of the people that I love most in the world. Midwestern, hospitable people who are just troglodytes. And there's no expectations of looks or talents. It's just people simply trying to go day by day. And that's what I love. Honestly, you get the best conversations that way. I love all the food in Kansas City. It's nice. You know, I I really do love living here. Um, First of all, uh, I had such a, I don't know, man. It's like I'm not, I'm not trying to blow smoke. I genuinely had a good time coming out this weekend, and um, it was funny on my way to your place for this. <laughs> what is should not be the most complicated costume in the world. I had to go buy a screwdriver, so we stopped in at this Home Depot, and it was so endearing. the The lady who was the cashier, one cashier, li- literally one cashier in this fucking megaplex home depot i thought that was just so so poetic and this girl um i should say this young woman i actually don't know her age but she's just telling everybody her life story (laughs) i was standing there for i'm not exaggerating 10 to 12 minutes as she just gives this life story to this guy who just was buying like a couple pieces of lumber and some bolts and then i get up there and I got my own life story, and I was just impressed with how much fucking material she had <laughs> for the two people in the building, man. Like, in L.A., it's just, they don't say shit to you. They just ring you out and kick you out. But she told me when she gets off of work and how the rain affects her mood and her fucking body, and, you know, she's she doesn't want to work late, and she's getting depressed, and I didn't have to say a word. I just walked up and handed her the screwdrivers, and I got all this fucking <laughs> info. It was... It just made me wonder, like, on a daily basis, on how much information you intake from strangers. And none. I wouldn't do that shit. I want to play that. <laughs> I'm not trying to hear about your stupid, stabby, sad life, dude. Oh, is the rain coming down? It's coming down for all of us, you dumb bitch. She I'm wasn't. Saying, no, fucking no, check no. it out and fucking let it go. God damn. <laughs> no, it wasn't tank, even. Thank fucking forever, dude. Good lord. It wasn't God. even sad. It wasn't even sad. It was just like. <laughs> it was like. Oh man, it's coming down pretty hard out there. Yeah, that's what I'd say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have eyes too. Cool. I want to leave this building now. Thanks. <laughs> this is not the time. I'm sorry. Hey, I wouldn't even say I'm sorry. I was. I, 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 I could. I was definitely stressed out. I was wondering when, 
Because that was the funny part, too. Is like I handed her the screwdrivers, and the, the immediate instinct was not to scan them. It was to hold them and talk to me. <laughs> I'm like, all right, man, at what point am I socially allowed to be like, you'll scan that shit? <laughs> immediately as soon as it as soon as is the person whose job it is to scan the fucking item i'd be like yeah let's go let's also that's that's your fault for going to going to a home depot and not just using shit self-checkout home depot has the no they were closed checkout they were closed there was no self-checkout you had oh to go. that's fucked yeah i'm like why is it you know I, that's where i interrupted she's like yeah it's kind of wet i'm like why is it a self-checkout open <laughs> because self-checkout at home depot is sick you get a little laser gun you gotta do it yourself yeah oh, awesome oh yeah no yeah I'm, I, i've I, i've cosplayed as a blue collar guy every now and then you know i've bought me very a blue collar dude. oh thanks <laughs> yeah appreciate you're, it. i think you're i think you're a very blue collar guy when i that's when a, i buy that's my what annual lead comic <laughs> yeah when i buy my annual ryobi battery to fucking hang up a stupid poster in my house you don't talk shit about Ryobi. No, Ryobi's garbage. I can say that much. It is terrible. That's they're, 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 they're hard, they're geeky hard to ass people. brand, dude. It's funny when people are like, well, I mean, sorry, I don't have enough for Milwaukee or DeWalt. Yeah. Dude, why don't you save 50 more fucking dollars? <laughs> How hard it is it to go and get 50 more dollars, dude? <laughs> Holy fuck. Well, well, when you're a guy like me, that's a lot of penis to suck, you know? When you're a guy like me, it's hard to see. Because I have many lives. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, man. You know, yeah, you're, you're spending it all at the gas station. You know, on your way home, spending half your paycheck on the on the lottery tickets, and then you're like, "Fuck! I should have used uh, that on my Dewalt drill." I should, man. I had, that was an overlaps of judgment. I should have used that for my Dewalt. Dewalt <laughs> <drill. laughs> What's up, Brick Sticks and Furry Bergs? I got to interrupt this episode again to thank a sponsor, which is none other than Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, intercourse, fucking. Are you satisfied with your sex life? Now you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up, huh? BlueChew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in a chewable tablet and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises because you never know when you got to be bricked the fuck up. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult one of their licensed medical professionals, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations. You know how that goes. Good morning, doc. My penis is too soft. You don't have to wait in line at the pharmacy, you know? Hey, uh, sorry, but I, I got to get my dick pills. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a very discreet package. You know, they say there's nothing sexier than confidence, and Blue Chew can help give you confidence where it counts, in your cock. With Blue Chew, men everywhere are excited to see the postman because he's posting some good shit in the mailbox, you know what I mean? Your package has arrived. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. Also, we've got a special deal for all our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code STRETCH at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code STRETCH, to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. We thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. When was the last time you looked up a tool on YouTube and just read through all the fucking, uh, all the guys commenting on how shit a brand is? <laughs> I've only actually ever seen that, not on YouTube, but I started seeing, because I started seeing people do like, uh, on my TikTok feed, I started getting a lot of people doing like, uh, I don't know, construction shit. Yeah. It's so funny, like watching guys be like, dude, hey, brother, you're doing it completely wrong. <laughs> brother, you're doing it completely wrong, honestly. <laughs> also, you need to switch up your tools, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Did you ever work with, did you ever work with guys like that when you were like doing framing and stuff? Now they're all Mexican. Mm. Which Mexican guys, let me tell you something. Those Mexican dudes, like 50, like mid 50s, whatever, which I'm not like the most in shape guy or anything, but those yeah. dudes can work all day. Like oh, it's lap, crazy. Laps and laps and laps and laps around you. It's crazy. 
more of the the framing and like cement pouring and stuff like that. Like we did a lot of sidewalk work and stuff. Like yeah. it was just trying to keep up with them. It, oh, it's not too because I had no interest really in doing it either. Like it's yeah. not like I was ever like, let me learn. Yeah. You no, know, I, I was just kind of like, what the fuck do I? Well, also it was like when I was doing that shit, I also worked at like. When I what the last construction gig I had was in Carlsbad, which is Southern California next to like San Diego, kind of. Yeah. No, I've been. Um, I was homeless out there, and I was trying to. I worked like a the, the concrete pouring. And I also worked at Walmart Photo Center while they still had one. I don't know if they have photo centers anymore. You said you were they homeless. Had huh? You said you were homeless. Yep. You were just living out the car. Yeah, I lived in. I was talking. I lived in my uh, Dodge Caliber. Mm. With my Dodge Caliber, and then I would try to do uh, animation tests and stuff mm. from my car. And I bought like Dodge Caliber had like a twelve volt battery thing. Right. I spent pro- I, I probably swapped the fucking battery on that car like <clears throat> four or five times. But I just fucking I'd I'd sleep in the Walmart parking lot because that's where I'd get the least amount of loitering tickets. And then I uh, across the street they had a in LA fitness and I had a membership there so I could take showers. Got it. Was that ever, I mean, obviously it's a fucking hard ass look to just walk out of work and then you're like, all right, I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to pass out in the car now. Or did you, was there any period of that that you enjoyed? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I say this a lot too. I think that it was the drive of wanting something. Mm. Like I was happy because I was not in my city doing things that I felt would put me in a place that ended up like my dad or something. Right. I was happy enough to be out there and like work. I mean, I had my Cintiq in my lap and a fucking like MacBook in yeah. the passenger seat and I would draw and try to do these animation tests. And I, I was, t- I, mean, I suck and I never got any work. Um, but I think, I, I mean, I was probably fucking, I was probably happier then than I am now, you know? Yeah. I said that a lot. I was like, I was, I'd fuck up. You know, is, was it hard? Did it suck? Did, did it suck sleeping in a 2008 Dodge Caliber? Yeah. <laughs> it, that was, that That did suck. But like, I think it was at a point in my life where I'm like, I'm 20, fuck, I was probably like 22. Mm. I'm 22. I mean, like, I don't owe anybody anything. I don't have a wife or kids or whatever. Yeah. I, the only person I'm affecting is myself. Yeah. You know? Right. So I was like, out of all the times I could have done it in my life, I think I did it in the best time. Yeah. And I think it was also, it was a big wake up call too. <clears throat> just like, you know, you're not as good as you think you are. And this is going to be a lot harder than you expect. Yeah. Thing. But I was excited and I yeah. was like really motivated to keep going. Do you have any of those, like, are, were, are any of those animation tests super memorable to you? Like, is there, are there any of them that stand out to you? Cause I don't think we've ever talked about this. Mm. Like, were they for big studios or was it just like random? Yeah, like a couple of them for Titmouse, but it was like most, a lot of it was like Adult Swim projects because Got Adult it. Swim's budgets are just really low. Right. So I think they take on a lot of new talent for new shows because they know that they can pay them kind of shit. But I was just like, I'll take whatever. You know? Sure. And I remember I got this break because this woman texted me and she was like, Hey, I think that you'd be a really good fit on the show. We're going to send you a test, whatever. And I did the test and it was cool. And uh, coincidentally, I ended up knowing the showrunner of this guy. And he's still very good friends with me today. Mm. But his show was bought and then they just canceled it. Like two weeks before I was supposed to like kind of figure out if I got this job or not. They're like, oh, we're just not going to do it anymore. Uh, I was tough. devastated. Yeah. Jeez. I was like, holy fuck. And that's why I had, I had to move back to Kansas City. I was, I got like, I think I got like five or six grand in debt from loitering tickets. Wow. And I just like was like, I can't fucking do this. I'm in my Kansas City. Was it just the sheer amount of tickets or was it a small? Yeah. Well, it was like, it was bullshit. I would go to places like 24 seven. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, if it's during operating hours, they don't care. But I got loitering tickets there. I got loitering tickets parked up front of the gym Mm. and stuff. And it was just because it was just like this one dickhead cop. I just kept like seeing. I don't know if it was his area or not, but I was trying to park and sleep in uh, parking lots and stuff. Did he, did he did he ever know you at a point, or was he just? We became kind of acquainted. I mean, I won't say his name, his last name, or anything, but I just like uh, 
because I talked to him a couple of times. Like there was a couple of times I woke up because a lot of the times he did it while I was sleeping and it was right. like during the middle of the night and I'd wake up and there'd be a ticket. What a dick move. And there was one time I left a note being like, please knock on my window before you give me a ticket. And he did it one time and he was like, you gotta go. And I said, are you the dude that keeps giving me tickets? And he was like, yeah. And I said, well, why? <laughs> like, yeah. can you not just knock on the window? Because usually like with other homeless people, well, well, to be fair, they're not in a car. Yeah. But like if they're sitting on like a bench, they'll just be like, hey, you got to go. Right. Or whatever. And the thing too is like there for a while, he was like, well, your, your uh, windows were obscured because I used to put cardboard pieces up in my windows so people could <clears throat> see me. Right. While I was sleeping. Because at first I would, you know, I was a new homeless and I was kind of, you know, a bit like, it feels weird having people <laughs> be able to yeah. look at me while I'm sleeping. Right. Uh, but that, you know, but then after a while, I was like, okay, well, I won't do that anymore. But he still kept doing it. And it was just, it was really, it was very frustrating. Extremely, yeah. extremely frustrating. How long was that uh, period of life? I was probably homeless four or five months. Probably. Yeah. D um, And then the whole time, you know, you're working at Walmart Photo Center and doing construction. Yeah, I try to pay um, bills and stuff and try to pay for like my phone. And when you were like, construction, did, were you like W 2 or were they just, you know, cash pay at the end of the day? That was cash pay. That was like, everybody yeah. was pretty much cash pay. I'm pretty sure I was working with a bunch of illegal guys too. But the yeah, foreman that owned, owned the business, he would just like give me some cash at the end of the week. So we mm. just got cash pay out to the end of the week. Got it. it would, and the would Walmart, you the Walmart one was obviously W 2. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you say you did sidewalk work, was it just like random neighborhood shit or were you doing stuff for the city? No, more commercial. Yeah, city stuff, like stuff, like additional stuff. I'm like, like we're, really weird shit in LA that I see is like there's sidewalks in the middle of like, high, not like major highways, but like def, like four lanes of traffic, they would add a bunch of sidewalks to that. Because people Got it. Well, apparently want to walk, but that stuff or repairing stuff for like strip malls, you know, like, yeah. if, like if somebody was like, like we did one for a Chick Fil A one time, <laughs> so it's just like the outside of a Chick Fil A. You know, like shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that, by the way. Thank, thank you for your service. Yeah, yeah. I, I was very. I remember I would sit outside and just people watch him going to Chick Fil A. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know how hard it was. You don't even. You don't even know that I fucking crafted that sidewalk for you. Yeah, and you would go eat there. <laughs> Just wait for people. Do I get a discount or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is in the cross with some family and they're like enjoying themselves. It's like, you like that ADA ramp, huh? You like yeah. That? Yeah. That uh, yeah I, I, I wait for the one guy with a wheelchair. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, buddy. Hey, smooth sailing, right? And you don't even you don't even explain. You're just smiling and saying, "Yeah, that. he's like, it's okay, I guess." I'm like, "You son of a bitch." Damn, that's crazy, man. Un unironically the cardboard pieces in the window that's um <laughs> how many weeks in as a homeless did you decide to do that or did it take a while it was like night one night one yeah yeah i was really kind of like frightened honestly, honestly. yeah of course carl's bad is like carl's bad is like a, like it kind of reminds me of florida mm. where it's like uh it's it's a lot of old like conservative people live there yeah I think it's like kind of like a retirement community town yeah but there's a lot of like drug addicts yeah shit yeah and, like i remember the, the first couple of nights i tried i tried sleeping because there was like an open parking lot that was kind of on the outskirts but it was by the beach yeah and i was always like oh this is kind of nice i would correct my windows you could hear like the waves kind of roll in and it was nice but like some dudes came up they tried they like didn't see me laying in there because my my seat was on the way back and they popped the they tried like popping the hood of my car what taking shit and i was like huh. i was like afraid to even say anything yeah so i just like honked my horn and the guys like you know ran off like yeah. uh, a couple of fucking like raptors from jurassic park yeah. <laughs> and like that kept happening anytime i did that so i was like if you stay more in town with like i just started sleeping under stuff that had like tons of lights yeah mostly uh but then because of that too i was like it was so bright that i just initially did it because i didn't want people to see me but then also just to like make it more dark inside of my car yeah so you didn't even have you didn't have tint so you're putting up cardboard on on all four doors <clears throat> yeah damn 
Some big ass windows on that thing, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really not a big deal. I mean, I like, like they were like perfect or anything, but it was just like, it was like, I think four panels I'd put up. Yeah. Pas- passenger, driver, back seat windows, and then back window. And because you were, a, were, you were a, you were an art student, did you like cut them to shape or was it just some bullshit that you just threw up? It was mostly some bullshit I just threw up. Got it. My art degree, it would be very, very sad. I, I think that there's a lot of times where I wanted to blow my brains out for getting an art degree. <laughs> I was sitting there and I was like, this is cool. I love being homeless. Yeah. This is sick. Yeah. This is really cool. Yeah, At the that. same time, though, I had like a sense of pride. Too. Like, I yeah. was just like, some of my friends from college, like really good animator buddies. I remember I was like, I had talked to them for years mm. because... And this, and which looking back on it now, it's so stupid, but I was so mad because we sat there like first semester of senior year. And I was like, I'm thinking about going to California. When I graduate, we should go. I try to get jobs out there. Oh yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And of course, as soon as time came to do stuff, they were like, no, oh, I'm thinking about getting a motion graphics job, like all this stuff that we would say that we hated during school. Right. And I remember, and I remember I was just so fucking so mad and like resentful towards them that they would uh, pursue the dream yeah or just like also the thing too like the camaraderie i was more so upset that it was like you guys don't even want to try yeah like yeah i felt alone in the dream kind of mm. thing like i yeah. felt alone in the ambition to be like i want to i don't want to just work a motion graphics graphic design job or something which more power to people that do want to do that but i was like i would rather just i would work construction like I, that's just yeah. not the kind of job i want to do yeah so but i was upset i was like this is the time to do it and they're like oh i don't know i mean i'm coming you know they're offering me thirty eight thousand a year yeah like thirty eight thousand a year dude which when you're fresh in college and whatever you know that's cool yeah this is a super solid salary <laughs> but i was just like just so bummed yeah i remember i, I remember they would text me and shit i didn't talk to them for a long time yeah because i was just so bitter um yeah what was it like a pact like was it like all of you were supposed to go do it for sure or was it like a pact but it's like if it's like i, I always tell people it's it's like uh if you and your bros were like let's go skinny dipping and you're the yeah. only <laughs> asshole like naked <laughs> and you're fat and you look fucking stupid you're like well i feel really fucking dumb <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, but it's like what, what, you, you kind of hope that your friends would want to just do it to try it, because the whole thing too is like you can always get out of the water. Yeah, you know, like that, and that was the thing too is like <clears throat> fucking journey of me with my career and stuff. It's it was never like I would I wouldn't even say it's like a good one, but it's just a thing of like persistence, continuing yeah. to grow, and then just like keeping your eye fixated on the initial goal you have, because that's the thing is like. You're never going to go into any career path. I don't give a fuck if you're an electrician or if you're trying to be like a fucking circus juggler yeah. or something. Yeah. You're not going to just like get up and just get it. That's just not going to happen. Yeah. And it's like, you, like, and a lot of people, what happens is they will try something and then they will give up because it's hard <laughs> yeah. or they are broke or whatever. Yeah. And they will take an easier route. Yeah. That is safer. It's more secure. And I, you know, and I, I think a lot of people are smart for doing that. I think the people that like push through and you go through the hard shit, I think those are the people that also are able to like reach a different level of success mm. and happiness or like fulfillment, which, you know, me and you, I don't think we're like the happiest guys in the world, but I think that like, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm at least extremely fulfilled with what I'm doing. Like, I feel like I have, it feels like an actual purpose versus a lot of the jobs I had before it just felt like it was a paycheck, which I think is a big difference. Yeah. I think, um, well, yeah, no, first of all, I mean, this is, uh, yeah, we never talked about it in depth. We've never gone in depth about this. You know, like you've kind of given me just short commentary here and there about this. So this is like super interesting. Um, but also, yeah, I think, I think there's an interesting thing about perseverance too, where like, um, not to be whatever, but after putting out the special, I've been having this weird thing where, uh, you know, I'm very, I'm very happy with the direction it's gone, but then I have these weird moments where I think, you know, oh, did I suffer enough for this? Which is really corny and really lame to think, but it's almost just like a weird, 
I don't know, like I don't know if you get this, but when you push through question your question your own legitimacy. Yeah, I think there's like this weird thing where when you push through difficult times, you just get used to things being ass. So it's almost like you kind of convince yourself that things need to be ass to be valid. It's it's this really dumb thing that I don't think I'm unique in experiencing, but I don't know if you get much of that these days. I think my own envy blinds me all the time I think mm. like uh i think i hyper fixate on the successes and the triumphs of others mm. even in a way where i wish they didn't have that but i look at that thing yeah and the envy of that blinds the own experience that i'm having mm. and it is the speed bump that completely derails the uh forward mom- momentum that i have it's a, um, it, it's I just have to say that that part is so weird too because um it's such a weird thing to explain because you're not competitive with other people it's it's definitely with yourself you know you, you want and I don't want to speak for you but I guess, I guess with me you like you look at what other people are doing in their career and you're like oh fuck like I need to pick it up or I need to this or I need to that and it's just this weird thing where because everything is so public and and other people's success seemingly can be measured, you have no idea if they're in like crazy debt or something like that off of a project or whatever. But yeah, it just becomes this thing where, you know, something that could be inspiring, you almost turn it into, oh man, did I make this? I, I, I don't know if you do this, but I'll do this where I'll think, damn, did I make a mistake here? Should I have done this at this time? And it, it just becomes this weird hyper analysis on yourself at all times and it's uh i think this happens in other fields as well but i do think it's very weird when specifically about entertainment like everyone's career is so visible and can so you know publicly be measured it it just inevitably creates like a weird ass headspace to be in for yourself so yeah i guess that's a long way of saying i relate to that <clears throat> no i mean Everybody has their own ways. I mean, I, I, I look at a lot of the, uh, a lot of my own insecurities come through by wanting validation from other people I respect in my field. I look yeah. at other people's videos and these like extreme triumphs and these things where I'm like, I want to feel happy for this person. Yeah. And I look at their comment section and I feel a lot of jealousy and envy because I see all these other people that I enjoy comment on their stuff where they don't comment on my stuff or something. Sure, sure, sure. Which feels very petty, but at the same way, I, I just translate that as like, uh, it's just, I think, all I want is that like respect, I guess. Yeah. And to just have somebody be like, I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. N- not just coming from some like fan, but coming from somebody where I can look at them and be like, I really love what you're doing in your art. Mm. And, to, and to have that mutual respect amongst the community of like creators and stuff, which, you know, I, I've, I've grappled with that a lot too because part of me too is also like I don't want to just like take these routes of being like the the artist that's doing shit you know like you have to do it this way or whatever because mm-hmm. I'm trying, trying to make, to make a, business. a business I'm trying to like be profitable and have like a better life for myself and fund other things but it, yeah it, 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 there are there's many times where I look at that and I'm like I like I'm almost I'm like begging or like hoping to God that like other people come together from the platform or something that can be like, I really love this or something. Uh, yeah. It's, um, it's pretty, <clears throat> well, I, you know, I have to thank you for this because, um, just that whole, you know, questioning yourself thing. It's, it's like really hard, uh, to, I don't know, navigate solo at times. And then it feels lame to like, want to reach out to friends and like, be like, is this good? So, you know, you're at least with, you know, since we've been working together, like you've always been massively just supportive and like unprompted, like unpromptly like vocal, like weirdly at times or sometimes I'm really in my head and then you'll just shoot me a line. And yeah, it's crazy how that has just like such an impact on like your ability to keep going. And I, and I, and I get why, uh, in entertainment you'll see people like band together because you know it's it's hard to believe when like a bunch of strangers are going yo this is awesome like sometimes you need that like tangible 
person who, yeah, you res- you hold in high regard and they can just give you that, even that simple note of being like, yo, this is, um, this is solid. Like, um, congratulations. It's sometimes it's just as simple as that. And you go, okay, fuck, I can, I can breathe a little bit. And yeah, uh, it gives it the, the, the validity to it, mm-hmm. I think makes it something of substance there. Yeah. That's something that I've really grown to despise too, with doing stuff online and trying things and stuff is like, I feel like I put out these questions and it's weird because you don't want to like ask creator friends all the time. And it's nice to like approach your community and your fan bases with stuff. But the parasocial relationships with things is extremely difficult. The way that people like interact with their like creators and stuff is just extremely fucked. Yeah. And you know, sometimes I, you know, it's obviously a really complex thing to answer and I'm not even going to try to do it right now, but I just think the way social media has completely shifted and I'm not about to do a long commentary on it. It really is just kind of wild how with algorithms specifically now, you know, people are just kind of, you know, your phone is just um, obviously a television, but the way that it, I don't know, it like, personalizes it to you and then how that th- how these things you're observing can just feel like oh this is mine like it's in my hand you know and you just get like some really sideways feedback from people where you're like bro i we don't know each other and i'm just you know i'm just trying to do my thing and i'm just trying to make something that people enjoy and then when people get you know just really weird about the feedback that they want to give you it's like some people just completely forget you're a person and I'm not about to go down this, you know, fucking street either, but yeah, it, the, the parasocial thing really is, really is wild. You know, <laughs> the greatest example I can, of that I can point out is I've talked about it a few times now, but when I was in Scotland, this dude, I was just, you know, people hung outside the venue. So I popped out and I was just like taking pictures of people or whatever. And this dude got so jazzed to see me and like, we go take a picture and he just fucking, full palms my ass like thinking like we're boys and yeah it's fucked i just remember thinking dude like you just completely violated the fuck out of my space (laughs) 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 but yeah (laughs) i've never had somebody sit there and uh physically assault me that way yeah yeah i wouldn't do which also I say physically assault as if I mean just just in the way of just being like dude this the fucking uh, the personal space has been breached my friend <laughs> what would you do man just a just a rabid twenty four year old dude runs up to you he's like me Canyon man I love your shit and he just full arms you and just starts nuzzling in between your chest just nose to chest just I feel like I'd uh, I'd be like okay thanks. <laughs> I think it'd be that a lot. If it was one of those slaps to the ass where it was also like the middle digit, it's kind of like slipping between the crack or something. That's where I might be like, okay, hey, <laughs> you know, he just man. slides his middle finger up your ass, just fucking. Yeah, you. he's like that's trying to make like a little. He's trying to press that fucking. You know, that's easy, but yeah, that, that, yeah, that's fucked up. That would that would definitely fuck me up. I'd definitely be like, weird. You need to step two steps back to slide up your ass crack. <laughs> yeah. I just say congratulations because I know he's married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations! <laughs> What's your favorite? Sit- I mean, your special's coming out again, or you're you're, you're going on tour again, I should say. What uh? What's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite? Um, you know, city to go to? Where are you stoked to go to? Uh, unironically, if I put it in top three, it's gonna be KC. Is is top three, and that's <clears throat> that's unironic. It's just. Oh, dude, Alina, bro, I didn't really even get to de- go in detail with you about this. I'll name other two cities in a second. Who cares? But uh, we went to that Andy's by yeah. where we were staying, mm-hmm. and I could just feel like it's a good thing we don't live there because if we had a gun in the trunk, I think Alina would have hopped out, pulled out that fucking Benelli, <laughs> and just held it up to the window and was like, stop lying to me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because you guys are saying that they said that the fucking there's like no chocolate left or something. Yeah, and they go, we ran out of chocolate and vanilla. And how? I mean, that that was Alina's face. I could see 
her pointer finger just reaching in the glove box for an invisible fucking revolver. And I was like looking back at the at the cashier or whatever going, hey, listen, man, uh, mm-hmm. my wife really wants this uh, cream. There's nothing you can do in there for, for her. And they were like, no, we ran out of vanilla and chocolate. What did you guys do then? Uh, we went across the way to a McDonald's, but there was a super hilarious, like, positive experience out of that. We, so we get to the first window, and, you know, uh, the person ringing us out is just completely checked out. And Alina goes, should we get an apple pie? I say, yeah, sure. So I turn to the to the cashier, and I go, can we add an apple pie to that? Um, or no, no, I fucked up, and I said, do you have any apple pies left? I gave her the option to exit. Mm. She said, now. Dude, are you looking at me right now? Yeah, yeah. Like, just, r- like, <laughs> the disdain. Like, the f- she she played me. She was like, the fact that you even phrased it like that, dumbass, of course I'm Yeah, sorry. of course. Checkmate, dude. <laughs> you just checkmated your fucking self. Are you kidding me? I just threw out all my pieces at the top of the game. So- I kind of wish that she would have looked at you and just be like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Nope. Nah, nah, though. Nah. nah. So then I then I get to the second window, and uh, uh, the gentleman working the second window, he, uh, you know, for for full context, little flamboyant, you know. But it, it adds it adds like a beautiful. So I pull up to the window, and he just soy jacks me. He just goes, <gasps> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <gasps> you are no way. No, nah, and he it was more of like a, oh my gosh. Oh my god! And I go, I go. What's up, man? How are you doing? And he's like, it just frozen soy jack. And he goes, I watch you all the time. And I go, oh, hey, hook, hey, hook brother up with an apple pie. I didn't even say that. I didn't even had to. He knew what wavelength I was on. I just leaned out a little bit and I said, Hey, man, you got any apple pies left? And then, uh, where the smile, the smile he gave me, it was like. You know, they come in it, huh? Did he come in it? Um, no, but this no, it was it was more like uh, how positive are you actually? Think about it for a legitimate second. I don't know. I because he probably because he walked away because he walked away, didn't he? Well, he to go get it, didn't he? did. But I don't know if he came yeah. in it because um, I was you know when I broke out the apple pie, I got on my knees and I sprayed it all over my face, and then I was like pushing <laughs> it. <laughs> I legit, I legitimately think that. There is a world where you might have gotten common that apple pie. <laughs> Maybe, man. This the smile he let me have. If you if you knew after the fact, actually, here's a kind of a question for you to end the podcast on is if you knew that a guy was like, "Oh my god, I'm a big fan of yours," blah blah blah. This isn't you saying that you're mad because obviously you can be mad. But after the fact, he watches you eat the whole thing up. You're like licking your fingers and shit. Mm, you know, goddamn, that's good. Wow. And he comes up and he's like. I can't Obviously, you're mad, but do you think that you would have, w- would you be mad that, or would you think that it's gay to like it or something to where you're like, I have to say that I, you get on the defense, or would you just be like, you know, that really, you had no idea that it was coming in it before, or would you just be like, you know what, like, honestly, afterwards, that didn't even, like, affect the taste? I think it might. Like, w- like, would you be tripped up in that way? You know, I think it'd be one of those, like, um, <laughs> like the ending of Old Boy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I go see a psychic and I say, <laughs> "Yeah, I just cut out my tongue because I ate a, a cum filled <laughs> apple a, apple pie, and I would just like to forget." And then she goes, "Sure." And then she does the little, you know, look at that tree. I think if a guy came up, if a guy came up to me and did it, and my fat ass is still chewing it, and he's like, "By the way, it came that," but the but I had no just I had no idea that it was in there. I'd probably just be like, "Oh man, really?" <laughs> Come on, man! It'd be that, but at the same time, too, I'd be like, I did not at all t- taste the cum. If anything, I'd be like, I would be really curious. Or if anything, I'd probably be like, if I couldn't taste it, I'd be like, you must be a diabetic or something, dude. I'm just you, you know, how, you know, how diabetics pisses are sweet. Their, their cum's probably sweet too. Yeah. Hey, this is bullshit. I made that joke last week, and you, you, you gave me flack for that. And here you are. What is it? Talking about sweet cum off a of diabetic, you're like, I don't think that's how that works. And here you are talking about eating some sweet cum. Um, I don't think that. Um, I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> um, um, yeah. I'm just laughing at your Midwest polite taking over. He's like, yeah, oh, I jizzed in that, and you're like, 
Oh, no way. <laughs> Damn it. I mean, come on, man. Really? <laughs> All right. You know, you also never gave the viewers one. I, this is what pissed me off, dude. I want to end the pod. I want to end the pod. You want two more shots? I, I, I don't even want you to respond. Okay. Because I want to have the last word. Okay. We recorded the episode before this at my studio. Yeah. And Noel didn't say one complimentary thing about the studio. Not Oh, one. here we go. Here not we... one thing. On on mic. Okay. You 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 had plenty to say off mic, but you, you didn't. and also I thought, you know what? I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's back home. He's a little shell shocked. He's back home now. Maybe he'll say something today. He didn't say one complimentary thing to the space that I have created out of nothing. Listen. Out of nothing. No, what did I say? I said I want to end the episode with me getting the last Listen, I'm going to say something next episode. I'll say something, next episode. No, I'll no, say no. something I, next episode. I, I, I hope you will. And the thing is, is, I want you to really simmer on this, dude. 